use every resource at the government's disposal to hold BP to account for the Gulf oil spill. The president used his weekly internet address to again promise that those who were responsible would be brought to justice. Well, the president's anger reflects the rage felt by many Americans about the way BP has handled the crisis, and critics say the company's chief executive, Tony Hayward, has only found the flames with a series of ill-judged comments. On May the 14th, he told the Guardian newspaper, the Gulf of Mexico is a very big ocean. The amount of volume of oil and dispersant we're putting into it is tiny in relation to the total vo volume of water. On May the 18th, he told Sky News, I think the environmental impact of this disaster is likely to have been very, very modest. Then at the end of last month, he said, there's no one who wants this over more than I do. I would like my life back. Well, he did apologize for the last remark after a storm of protest in the US where commentators were quick to point out that 11 people died when the drilling rig exploded. So then is BP a victim of bad luck or bad planning? Could the oil giant have handled the crisis better? Let's speak to crisis management expert Jonathan Hillis, joins us from Sutton Coalfield, and US commentator Jeffrey Robinson joins us from New York. If I could start with you, and a very good afternoon and good evening to you, uh, gentlemen. If I could start with you, Mr. Robinson, then in terms of PR, is it possible to, to do well when you're up against a very angry president of the United States? Short answer, no. And, and this man has handled this in a textbook case. He will be remembered uh, for what not to do in a crisis management situation. Makes me think of the captain on the deck of the Titanic. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the music playing. Uh, well, they did, they, but they did say the captain of the Titanic did quite well. Uh, went down to the ship, maybe running into the iceberg wasn't a, wasn't a good idea in the first place. But um, just tell me a little bit more about um, why the president is so angry. Well, what, what you've got, you've got a situation that's building up, and, and, and Tony Hayward will go down with the ship. Uh, he may even lose the ship, which is, which is something that I don't think he understands. Uh, uh, he, by the way, he's written in the Wall Street Journal on the op-ed today. He said, we are fully prepared to be judged by the quality and effectiveness of our future conduct. No, pal, it's what you did 47 days ago and, and since then that counts. Uh, he's up against the President of the United States, who's going to have a real political problem if that oil reaches the west coast of Florida. Because if that oil wipes out the west coast of Florida's summer beaches, it's going to be Obama versus Hayward. And you're going to find in a year or two or three, Mr. Hayward in an orange jumpsuit in a federal prison. Okay, well, Jonathan Amos, um, do you see it uh, as that bad for BP and in particular for its uh, chief executive, Mr. Hayward? Well, I think what's quite uh, ironic is that Actually, Tony Haywood and BP have done many things right in terms of its crisis communication response. The first thing, of course, being that Tony Haywood has actually fronted up. He's been on the scene. He's been communicating. The, the bad news, though, is that a number of the things that he said have been very unhelpful. You mentioned three of them earlier on. But I think even more damaging is the fact that BP came into this situation with uh, not a perfect reputation, certainly as far as the states was concerned. It had the explosion at the refinery in Texas in 2005. It had a, a leaking pipe in Alaska uh, in 2006. And so people will, 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 will forgive an organization that has an isolated problem, but trying to excuse or trying to communicate your way out of a a series of problems makes you look accident prone at the very least. But you give him points for fronting up, so to speak, in that you know some chief executives, particularly in the past when it's uh, come to crises like this, uh, have tended to, to disappear altogether. I mean, Mr. Hayward has been available, even if comments like, I want my life back, perhaps haven't been the most appropriate. I do. I think it's always very easy to criticise from the outside. I think it's very easy for people like me to say how you might do it perfectly, how you might do it better. It's much harder doing that when you're in the white hot, hot glare of the media spotlight. I do think that BP, from a communication point of view, uh, if not necessarily from an operational point of view, from a communication point of view, they've done many things right. They've used the internet very effectively. If you have a look at their site on the website, there's a lot of useful information there. And I do give Mr. Haywood credit for communicating for being there at the scene. It took the president of Toyota two weeks to come out and make a statement about his product recall. So tough times, 
Uh, I believe that BP has made mistakes and it's going to be a, a long journey out of it, but it has not done everything wrong as far as communication is concerned. Uh, Jeffrey Robertson, is there a tinge of anti-Britishness creeping into this? We always know it's the Brits that play the no. baddies in, in, in Hollywood movies. If this had been Exxon, would the reaction have been exactly the same? No, of course it would have been. The, you're talking about the single largest ecologic, ecological disaster in the history of the planet. We're not talking about Toyota. We're talking about perhaps killing the Gulf of Mexico and all that entails. This man has come out, and I'm going to say this, and I will stand by it, with the most idiotic statements. He has mishandled this thing from the get-go. Now, he's, he's about to have a major turning point here, and there's a fork in the road. First of all, he's been spending money on ads. There are full-page ads in the newspapers today. He's been on, uh, BP's had ads on television. Uh, they've got to start spending that money on the cleanup. They've got to go to the fishermen in the Gulf. They've got to go to Louisiana and Florida and say, here's the money. They've announced a $2.6 billion dividend. Trust me, if they pay that dividend, a year from now, BP is in receivership. Well, what about That's that, how serious what this about, is. Yeah, what about that point, though, about at least he's, he's, he's fronting up, he's making himself available, taking out ads. There is communication going on, and they have said that they will make good. Uh, you know, standing... No, 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 no. He's not playing with a bunch of candy-ass journalists. He's playing with the country. He's standing up in front of the camera, and he's saying idiotic things. I want my life back. Sure, he took it back. But crisis management is not about coming forward and saying, oh yeah, we'll do what we can. No, crisis management is saying, we've got a $2.6 billion dividend that we're not paying. We're going to say to the U.S. government, here's $2.6 billion, spend it. We'll do whatever we can. That's crisis management, being a participant in the cleanup and in trying to solve the problem. Not in saying, well, you know, uh, so I don't know why this is our problem. And he said that, too. No, okay. this man has acted in a completely reckless way, 47 days in. Okay and that oil is still spilling. Well, Jonathan Hemus, I mean, could this be the end, uh, not just of uh, Tony Hayward, but uh, the independence of BP? I think that certainly is a possibility. And again, if we put ourselves in Tony Hayward's shoes, that's one of the challenges that he's facing right now. He's got a very hostile US audience. Understandably, he's got Barack Obama, the most powerful man in the world, putting him under intense pressure. But at the same time, the reality is that he also has shareholders who are putting him under pressure. He's got employees who want to be proud of the company that they work for. And as that share price goes down and down and down, clearly the future of the company as an independent company uh, comes more un under question. One of the key things I would say, though, is that leadership is also about what you do before the crisis. The best crises are the, are the crises that are prevented that don't happen. And one of the things that I do fear is that maybe the, the culture within BP that, uh, that Tony Haywood and his predecessors created, maybe that has created an environment, a situation whereby these series of crises have been allowed to happen. And that's where I see the major problem being. And that's where, from a corporate point of view, I think the long-term attention needs to be focused. Okay, gentlemen, must end it there. Jonathan Hemus, Jeffrey Robertson, thank you both very much.